page one. And our supplement books, I keep falling in love with him. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. And I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. And he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Savior and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. And he keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again my god keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again and he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by oh what a love between my savior and i i keep falling in love with him yes over and over and over and over again and he keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again my god keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again and he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by Oh, what a love between my Savior and I. I keep falling in love with him. Yes, over and over and over and over again. Amen. <clears throat> we have one more, and after which we have scripture reading and prayer. God has smiled on me. God has, he smiled on me, and he has set me free. You know my God has, he smiled on me, and he's been good to me. I said, my God has, he smiled on me, and he has set me free. You know my God has, he smiled on me, and he's been good to me. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. You know my God has he smiled on me and he has set me free you know my god has he smiled on me and he's been good to me i said amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. You know my God has, 
He smiled on me, and he has set me free. You know my God has, he smiled on me, and he's been good to me. Amen. Let us all be standing for scripture reading and prayer. Good morning, Metro. Good morning. A scripture reading this morning will be taken from Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. That's Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. If you have it, say amen. amen. And it reads, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there eat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Amen. 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 Good morning, Metro. Good morning. Let's go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we come before you, O God, as one people, O God, thanking you, Lord, for this beautiful, beautiful day that you've created here in Indianapolis, O God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for letting us see this day, O God. Lord, we give your name, the honor, the praise, and the glory, for you are worthy, O God. We call upon you, O God. We acknowledge you, dear Lord. Lord, forgive us for all our sins and shortcomings, O God. Make us worthy, O God. To offer up these prayers and praises and, and glorify your holy name, dear Lord. Yes. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for Metro Church, oh God, and, and Lord, for the ministry that's here, oh God. Yes. And Lord, we speak a special blessing over those who are in the presence of this, this glorious assembly right now, God. Yes. And those who are on the way and those who can't make it, oh God. We intercede yes. for them as well, dear Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the word that's coming forth this day, O oh God. Yes. Lord, let it land on good ground in our hearts, O oh God, right. and yes. bring forth much fruit for yes. your praise and for your glory, O oh God. Oh Lord, Lord, give us an anointing here in this place, O oh God, yes. to, to move forward, O oh God, yes. and to win souls Amen. for you wisely, O oh God. Yes. Help us, O oh God, to have words, O oh God, that may bring men and women, boys and girls, closer to you, yes. dear Lord. Mm-hmm. One by one. Little by little, oh God, but you get the glory, oh God. You get the honor and the praise, oh God. But Lord, we need the wisdom, oh God. Help us, oh God, not to just look at the end result, oh God, but to do our part, oh God. Whatever our part is, planting or watering or or whatever we're supposed, let us do our part, oh God, and trust you to have the glory and the increase, oh God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, as this word comes forth today, oh God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, encourage our minister, oh God. Let him preach it with anointing and authority, oh God. Let him enjoy, oh God, the gift you've given him, oh God. Help us, oh God, to receive it, oh God, and to be productive in your kingdom, dear Lord. For we love you and we glorify you, oh God. And Lord, we ask you, oh God, let this house, oh God, be a place of healing, oh God. Let it be a place of restoration, oh God, for marriages, oh God. For those who are distraught and discouraged, oh God. Let this be a place, oh God, that men and women, boys and girls, if they can just get here, oh God, they'll feel your presence, oh God. Those who are watching by, by, uh, by video or by the YouTube and Facebook and all the different ways they can watch. Lord, send that anointing and blessing upon them, O God. Touch their bodies, O God. Encourage their spirits, dear Lord. We intercede even now, O God, in the name of Jesus, for your praise and for your glory. Amen. 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 Let's see. We Son, I keep falling in love with him because he keeps smiling on us, right? So where could we go but to the Lord, right? Page 437. Let's bring our minister up because we know he has a blessed word from God. Amen. Amen. Living below in this so sinful world. Oh, 
only a comfort can afford Striving alone to face temptation Somebody tell me now where could I go but to the Lord Please tell me where could I go I go. You know that I'm seeking a refuge for my soul. You know that I'm needing a friend to save me. And somebody tell me now, where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind. I love them, everyone. We get along in sweet accord, but when my soul needs manna from somebody, tell me now, where could I go but to the Lord? Please tell me where could I go, where could I go? You know that I'm seeking a refuge. For my soul, you know that I'm needing a friend to save me. And somebody tell me now, where could I go but to the Lord? Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word Yet when I face the chilling hand Somebody tell me now where could I go but to the Lord Please tell me where could I go Where could I go You know that I'm seeing Gain a refuge for my soul. You know that I'm needing a friend to save me. And somebody tell me now, where could I go but to the Lord? Please tell me, where could I go? Where could I go? You know that I'm seeing. Gain a refuge for my soul. You know that I'm needing a friend to save me. And somebody tell me now, where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. Let's all say amen. amen. Let's all say amen again. We are grateful indeed to God who has blessed us to be able to be here today and to offer up praises and uh, worship him in spirit and in truth. And uh, there's no better truth than what Brother Terry has just saying. We need a friend who can save us in the end. And, and, and where can we go? I can't come to you and you can't come to me for salvation. We need a friend in Jesus. We need to be a friend and he is indeed a friend of ours. We want to say a welcome to all of you who are visiting with us today. We're grateful and thankful to have you here. Uh, amen. We, uh, we truly appreciate your presence and we thank God for you. We hope, trust, and pray you'll enjoy uh, the message and the worship service today. And uh, I'm a true believer that if you have something on your heart uh, or something that you need to get right at any point in time in this service, I'm not so stringent that you can't say, I, I want to be saved, I, I, this, that, and the other. Your salvation is important. That's why we're here. And so we're here to preach the uh, gospel of Jesus Christ, to make known uh, his word unto those that may not know him in the pardon of their sin, and that for those of us that who may have fallen short, because we do fall short every now and then, we can get it right before it's everlasting too late, because none of us know where we will be in the next few minutes at all. Things happen just like that. And you can be sitting in church and die. You, you, can be, you can be out here going to the store, anywhere, something can happen. And we need to be aware and take that seriously because it happens all the time. And the sad part about that is that too many, as I stated every week, have been lost out here and have been called away without Jesus Christ being their Lord and Savior. I don't say that because I need anything. I'm saved. 
I say that because my desire is to see everyone else be saved. And because I know that there's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of an almighty God. So we're thankful for Brother Terry for leading us in songs and praises. We appreciate you so much, my brother. Amen. Amen. And we're grateful and we're thankful for Bishop Blue who went to and read the scriptures on our behalf. We appreciate that. I know he looked at me kind of funny when we were in the room and he said, what do you want me to read? And I gave him two scriptures and he looked at me and said, is that it? And I'm like, that's all I need. You know, that's, that's all I need. You know, we'll, we'll see what we can get out of those two right there. And then we're thankful for Dr. Cash for going to the throne of grace. <clears throat> on our behalf, we appreciate you so much. It's good to see your faces that I haven't seen in, in a year. It's been a year since we've been over a year since we've been out of here. But God is good. And God in his own time. And so we thank God because he kept us. A lot has transpired in a year. He, but he saw uh, for uh, some reason or had a, a purpose for us to still be here. And so we thank him for that. And so I'm going to uh, get at my lesson this morning. I just need to know, first of all, before I delve off into it, how are you all doing? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 you, you all really don't sound like a people that has triumphed over this past year's trials and tribulations, but how are you doing this morning? Yeah, you sound better now. You sound better. There you go. There, there, there you go. There you go. So, Sometimes you don't know how blessed you are until some things slap you in the face in life. And then you don't have a problem praising God because you know it was God that got you out or it was God that kept you. And every now and then, God allows the wind to blow in our face. Every now and then, he allows the rain to come in our lives. And, and every now and then, he allows the snow to fall. And, and we have to walk in and, and, and walk through the weathers uh, of, of those uh, things that he sent our way. And, but we know if we're walking with him, everything's going to be all right. Amen. If we're walking with him, everything's going to be all right. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So I want to get at my lesson, <clears throat> if you all will. I'm in the book of Matthew chapter 7. I want to talk to you this morning from those verses. I'm going to read verses 13 and 14, just for re-emphasis sake again. Matthew chapter 7, and beginning at verses number 13. Jesus is the spe speaker here. And he says, enter ye in at the straight gate. That means that it's a difficult, but it's a straight gate. He said, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in their act. Then he says, because... Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. That's your shout right there. You know, you, 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 if you found that straight and narrow gate and you entered in, you still, that's your shout right there. You don't want to miss that. In this particular book, can I teach it first? In this particular book, uh, here from Matthew 5 through the end of chapter 7, is known unto us as the Sermon on the Mount. Amen, somebody? So, so here we find in Matthew that, 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 that Jesus uh, teaches on the Beatitudes in uh, Matthew 5, 1 through 12, and in verses 13 through 16, he teaches about salt and light. In verses 17 and 20, he teaches about the higher righteousness. In verses 21 through 26, Jesus teaches about anger and reconciliation. In verses 27 through 32, Jesus teaches about divorce and adultery. In verses 33 through 42, Jesus teaches about oaths and retaliation. In verses 43 through 48, Jesus teaches about neighbors and enemies. In chapter 6... 
we discover in chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, Jesus teaches about piety and giving alms. In verses 5 through 18, Jesus teaches about prayer and fasting. In verses 19 through 23, he teaches about possessions and masters. In verses 19, 24 through 34, he teaches about, uh, teaches about anxiety and God's kingdom. When we get to chapter 7, we discover that in chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, Jesus teaches about judging and, and hypocrisy. Uh, and then we get to uh, chapter uh, 7, and we find that 7 and, and verse number 12, he tells about prayer and the golden rules. And in Matthew 7, 13, and 14, Jesus teaches about two gates. We finally, from Matthew 5, uh, we finally come to the appeal to which Jesus has been moving through this whole sermon. He's been moving, guiding, and directing because he's getting to a place or to a point that he wants to drive home and allow his hearers to understand and to know that in this thing called life, uh, we come to a place where we are confronted with two gates, two ways. A straight gate, which is the narrow, and the broad way, which is one that leads to destruction. Uh, it is here that we see the Lord put narrow-mindedness and broad-mindedness in the proper perspective in the light of eternity. In other words, church, we are admonished to make the right decision when these roads intersect with one another. Somebody said, okay, Brother Middlebrook, I got that part of it, but, but what's your subject here? I'm, my subject for you this morning is that make sure you make the right choice. Make sure you make the right choice and live by it. Amen, somebody. Uh, uh, these two roads appear to be the same roads, but, but they're different. Therefore, one must be the wise man uh, Solomon stated as we look at it and see that even though they look alike, it appears that everything is the same. We, we, we can't run the risk of having a knockoff. Y'all know what a knockoff is. It, it's not the original. It's not authentic, but it, it looks like. It may even feel like, but it ain't the real thing. I came by to tell you, y'all know, it ain't nothing like the real thing. And so the wise man Solomon says this unto all humanity who is seeking and trying to find their way back to heaven with God to spend eternity with him the wise man said in the book of Proverbs 14 and 15 and you all can attest to this as well he says the simple he calls them the simple believe every word uh, but the prudent man looks well into his going. In other words, some people don't pay attention to the package or some people don't pay attention to directions. They'll miss their street because they weren't paying attention. And every now and then, some people, you have to remind them, like, hey, you passed by your street. You should have made a turn right back there. I came by to tell you, don't miss your street. Uh, stay on straight street. Find the street. Find the gate and enter in at that gate. So he says that the, the simple believes every word. But the wise man, the prudent man, looks well into his going. You, it, it behooves us to take time to look into our going when it comes down to where we will spend our eternal destination. Therefore, our decision, if you will, that we make will affect uh, uh, the direction. It affects the direction, and not only does it do that, but it will also impact the destination where we'll end up. So we have to understand that our decision that affects the direction and the destination. So we have to make the right decision so that our destination will end up where we want it to be, where we can be happy when we get there. There's no need in making the wrong decision and then end up in the destination and say, wow, I don't want to be here, but it's too late. You can't turn back. All you can do is just bear Fight it and accept the fact that I should have made the right decision. Two gates, two gates. The broad road has a wide gate. And what happens here, we're talking about this wide gate because Jesus is trying to get people to see that as we try to get people to see today that we need to understand that the most important decision that we'll ever make in life is our decision to follow Jesus Christ, to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. That, that's the greatest. It's not how, it's not where you build your house at. It's not where you work. It's not who your money is invested with. The greatest decision that you'll ever make in your life is whether or not you'll accept Jesus Christ's way or you will follow the devil's way. 
So, 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 so the broad road, it, it, it has a, a wide gate. A, and in that, we see in this thing called life, there's a whole lot of people moving and traveling. Because the gate is wide. But this narrow gate, y'all know how sometimes, even when we get in line, we go to the store sometime, if I can use this little simple analogy, we go to the store sometime, we see sometime that when we get there to check out, the line is long. And then we see the other ones, you know, they just running right, right through. Sometimes we want to jump out of line because we want to just run right. But, 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 but sometimes you find out that when you run right through, you, you miss something. And sometimes in life, we want to just run right through. But I came by to tell you, it behooves us to take the time to be prudent and to look into our the direction in which we're going in to make a wise decision and make sure that the decision that we made will have the positive impact on our destination. Jesus points out that this road, this wide gate, uh, broad way, it appears to be attractive. Satan can dress some stuff up for us. He can dress it up, oh, so sweet. And make it look good. Make it taste good. Make it feel good. Make you feel good about what you see and what you feel and what you taste. But everything that looks good for it to you, I came by to tell you, ain't good for you. And the broad way, the, the, the wide gate is, is not good for, for anybody because once you enter into that broad gate, you find yourself going down that path which God has not directed. And when we understand and know that we find that the word of God, we find that the broad offers on that particular road. It offers something that, that the straight and the narrow gate doesn't offer that's appealing to the natural man. But you have to be in Christ Jesus to understand and know that what's offered on the narrow gate is appealing to the man because the man or the woman that understands that in the narrow way it may not be filled up with a bunch of people it may be the path not be the path that's most traveled but it's a path that needs to be traveled if you're planning on making it to that eternal destination see on that broad way the broad way offers pleasures promotion possessions it offers power it offers piety of any sort it offers custom it offers culture and a varied uh, menu of distractions and delights uh, there are many amenities that are along this particular way and that are listed i came by to tell you if you ever want to see the beauties uh, that satan has to lay out for you all you got to do is uh, just move in the direction uh, that he's going in uh, and he'll show you all the things uh, that will quench your thirst and uh, will appeal to your appetite and will draw you in uh, only knowing that when you get where you're going uh, it's not what you really needed because sooner or later the road will run out uh, I came by to tell you that when we come to the end of our road uh, if we haven't chosen the right road or entered into the right gate uh, we'll find out that the lights were bright uh, but as I entered in uh, and I began that it was wider I find that the road began to get narrower and narrower along the way I find out the things that used to be pleasurable are no longer pleasurable. I discovered that you know what? I don't have any help that I can call on when my burden gets heavy. I don't have any company when I'm all alone. I don't have a friend that will stick closer than a brother. I have no prep life because I chose to go up down this wide gate, this wide road, this broad road. But when you discover that I chose the narrow gate, it doesn't mean that I won't have any trials or any tribulations. I'm going to have some trials I'm going to have some tribulations I'm going to have some pressures I'm going to have some burdens I'm going to have some dark nights I'm going to have some days that are weary but I have somebody who's sticking closer than a brother I have a friend in Jesus Christ and because Jesus Christ is my friend I'm never alone I have some help to walk with me through these uneven pathways I have somebody on the narrow way when I feel like giving up and said just keep on moving uh, if you're tired just say so uh, I'll pick you up and carry you on through but in this world we live everybody's uh, looking for fun uh, but I came to tell you life 
right here, right now might be fun, uh, but don't let your fun uh, that you're enjoying now be your final destination uh, because God has a better plan. He has a better benefit package. Uh, He has a better purpose. Uh, He has a better way. Straight is the gate uh, and narrow is the way uh, that leadeth unto life, but broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. I came by to tell you, you and I uh, need to understand that if you're here and you're not a child of God, you need to get in the narrow way. Why? Because there's abundant blessings uh, in the narrow way. Uh, Yes, fun uh, may last uh, for a season, uh, but I'm there to tell you, heaven is last uh, forever. It's called eternity, and God's son Jesus is laying out to the people to let them know to make the best choice, uh, but to look at the two and decide which one they will choose. God is good. I wouldn't plan on going all there, all right there. (laughs) On this, on this, on this, on this, on this, if you will. The many amenities on the Broadway, not even mentioned. We've come through a year, but we've seen some of everything happening. And it should be an awakening to many of us to see and realize that you know what this thing is real this is not a play thing I don't have time to waste I need to get in the way and stay in the way and trust God through all of my trials trust God through all of my tribulations we are losing people at ridiculous rates not just to a pandemic but because people are taking others lives and it's not just those that are that are out there doing anything you don't have to be doing anything wrong for somebody to take your life and, and, and what, 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 what I consider is that we know not the day nor the hour when we may be called home. Not just the day or the hour when Jesus returns, but when we may be called away. And, and so it's imperative for us to, to make sure that we got everything lined up just right. Now, 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 as we look at it, let, let, me, let me tell all, all of you that there... It's also a meant violence, you know, violence. I, I'm, I'm, let me take y'all here for a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm an old guy, but I'm a young guy. But I like old school stuff. And, 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 and there was a song by Tony that the temptations used to sing and they would say roses are red violence are blue in life on this Broadway there are violence violence along the way but can I tell y'all that in the midst of those violence that look so beautiful they're all so vibrant that are out there as well. In other words, everything that looks good and looks like it's worth picking, you better be careful before you pick the violent. Because you may pick the violent that has a viper laying there alongside of it. And, and, and I'm saying that in this, in this sense is that life on that Broadway will sting you. But none of us are concerned about that because we're not choosing that broad way. We're going to stay along that straight and the narrow. The broad way appears, if you will, to be light at the entrance. 
it, 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 it looks full of promise and persuasion, pulling and calling you to come on in here. But, but the truth of the matter is that it's not the way of God. It, it looks good. It feels God good. But it's not God's way. It, 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 it's presented by a Lord. I said it's presented by a Lord whose realm is actually darkness, whose rule is actually bondage, and whose reign is characterized by revenge against the almighty God as Satan did uh, when he tricked Adam and Eve in the garden. Revenge in the form uh, of ruin and damnation of mankind. We need to understand that the devil doesn't mean us any good and therefore we need to get on the narrow road and stay on the narrow road. The road offers no real joy. I don't know about y'all but I like peace and, and I I enjoy joy. I like being joyful. I, I don't like to be around people that's sad. And you ask people how they doing. I ain't doing. You ask them, well, I have a good day. Uh, what's good about it? I don't want to be around people that understands the joy of Jesus. People that knows that God uh, is able to give us uh, what we need at any given time in this walk of life. I don't want to be around people who think that, you know, I'm happy today but if I don't get my check, uh, I'm going to be mad and mean as I don't know what. I'm happy today but if things don't go my way I'm going to turn this thing out. I want to be around people that says, you know what? Well, the Lord must not intend for me to have it right now. But I, one thing I do know, he may not give it to me when I want it, but he's always right on time. I want to be around some people who's experienced what God is able to do and what God has done and know what God will do and have enough sense enough to know that even though I'm in this narrow way and those in the broad way are looking at me and saying, if God is only going to do that to you, then I don't want no part of your God. I tell them I'd rather have him with me than not to have him with me so then we have to tell him that you know what I may not have everything I want but I got everything I need on this narrow way and sometimes uh, people can understand why you are content they can't understand why you got a smile on your face when they think you ought to be frowning or you ought to be crying I'm not crying uh, tears of sorrow I'm crying tears of joy because Jesus has blessed me in an abundant way I'm crying tears of joy because God has filled me with his Holy Spirit. I'm crying tears of joy because I know that trouble don't last always. I'm crying tears of joy because he didn't have to do it, but he did. I'm crying tears of joy because Jesus saved my sanctified, sanct sanctified my soul from sin. I'm crying joy because when I leave here, I know where I'm going. Broad road doesn't offer no real joy. I, I came to tell you that joy, real joy, is only found in the presence of God and the pleasures forever only in the high priest. Psalms 16 and 11. It's important, church, for those of us to know that since God is not known on the broad path, the devil can offer only a synthetic pleasure. It ain't the real thing. It ain't nothing like the real thing. When, when you know Jesus and you have chosen him to be your Lord and your Savior and you looked at the options that you have, I could go out of this building. I'm not going to use that back door. One or two ways. Eliminating that one. I could go out that door or I could go out this door. To enter into the building. Now, if it's at this door, you look at it, this door is wider than this door. It's a lot of light outside of this door because you're going into the foyer. Thank you, sweet Jesus. And everybody likes to go out to the main door. But this door has something right next to it. That this door doesn't have. And all of y'all in here is over 45 or 50 can relate to this. If I go out that door, it's a longer distance for me to get around here to where if I need to get out here. But if I get out this door, I'm safe. Because I don't have to worry about getting around here. I can get right to the men's room or right to the women's room. Two doors, but only one 
is narrower than the other. Only one gives me the benefit of if I'm in a hurry and I need to get somewhere of arriving there on time. Now, y'all might not like this, but I'm saying, in other words, if you want to choose the right gate or the right door, choose the gate that is narrow. Choose the gate that's going to get you where you need to be. And you don't have to be wandering around like, oh, okay, which way do I go? No, no, no. You know that in order to get there, you need to go through this gate. Because when you get through that, this gate, it's safety here. You know when you get through this gate, if you need to, there's another gate right here to the right. And if you need to get out of this gate right here to the right, you ain't got to worry about trying to get to that one over there. Because it's a shorter distance. It's a wiser track to go through this door if I want to go from this door being on the inside to going through that door out there to the outside. We want to go on the outside away from the broad way. Enter in through the narrow gate and follow in the footsteps of God and leave, if you will, the broad gate alone. But many, the Bible says, there be that will go therein. So it's imperative for us to know that since God is not known on the broad path, the devil can only offer synthetic things. He cannot give you the real thing. I, I need you to know for God and only God has a monopoly on the real thing. You won't find it anywhere else. I heard God say in the book of Isaiah, the prophet 45 and 5, I am the Lord. And besides me, there is no other. I came by to tell you, when you know that the Lord God is the Lord, you don't need to look for a small L-O-R-D. You can look for the capital L-O-R-D. Lord Jehovah, Lord Jesus Christ, capital L-O-R-D. You can find him and not that little G. You can follow in the direction of the big G, which is the big God, the almighty God, the only God ever increasing. Is what it does, those just forever diminishing delights is the devil. That's all he can offer. His formula is things such as alcohol. And not only that, we find this things that we smoke. Amen, somebody. And not only that, there's drug addicts, there's sensualists, there's pleasure seekers. And we understand and know that all of that is offered out there. On the broad way. However, the broad path gets narrower still with time. Uh, can I talk to y'all about this? I'm almost ready. I'm almost ready to wrap it up. The broad way gets narrower with time. Here's what happens. I, I sent a picture out this past week, just me and my baby sister. And I just put it out there because uh, I wanted to, 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 to showcase her. And remember when we were young and kids growing up without our mother. And so I put us on there how we were uh, dependent upon one another. So that was my baby sister. And, 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 and so I put it on Facebook. And, 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 and some people said, wow, man, that looks funny. And what looks funny is because back then I had hair. But I came by to tell you, uh, I want you to know that uh, what happens on this, uh, on this broad way is that things change. If we go on this broad way, the broad way gets narrower with time. Old age creeps in. I ain't 17 years old no more. I'm way past that. Amen. Old age creeps in with its handicaps and its limitations. I used to run everywhere. But I don't get in a hurry no more, church, because I've gotten a little bit older. I, I take a step, and people say, boy, are you cool as you want to be? I say, yeah, I'm cool as I want to be. They just don't know that these knees ain't what they used to be. Uh, they don't know that this back ain't what it used to be. So I, I, I ain't trying to be cool. I'm just trying to get where I need to be in any shape, form, or fashion. Uh, every now and then, they say, why are you moving your hand? I'm, I'm moving my hand because that's my balance. Uh, you, you need a balancer because you, you lean to the left too far. You might fall so so you got to have that right. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. On the broad way, it gets narrower and narrower. Therefore, we need to be careful in what we choose and who we choose to follow. Watch this here. Bad health sets in. Now, don't get me wrong. It sets in on the narrow way. But bad health 
becomes the norm. You get high blood pressure. And you can get it as a Christian. Uh, you get diabetes. You get what the old folk used to say. You get the sugar. Say amen, somebody. You get arthritis. Yeah, you can't stand anywhere that is cold. And sometimes you get to where you can't stand anything at all. Uh, not only that, we began to get uh, 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 faculty problems. We, 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 we're looking for our phone and we're talking on our phone. Say, hey, man, somebody. Uh, we go in a room. We don't remember what we went in the room for. We just went in there. What did I come in here looking for? Uh, it's the same thing happened on the Broadway. Uh, uh, every now and then, every, every now and then, we, 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 used to, we used to not need glasses, but now we need glasses. Uh, and then when we did need glasses, we only needed them for reading, but now we need them for everything. Uh, we look around and we say, man, my old friend that I grew up with uh, is no longer here. Uh, 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 they're all gone. Mama's gone. Uh, daddy's gone. Sister's gone. Brother's gone. Uh, uh, children are gone. Everybody seems to be leaving, but yet you're still here. And you begin to feel like uh, I'm a little bit lonely. But I came by to tell you, all that happens not only on the broad way, but it happens uh, on the narrow way. But the difference between the broad way and the narrow way is that on the narrow way, you have some company. You have a friend, as I said, uh, in Jesus Christ. Uh, on the narrow way, it doesn't get darker. It doesn't get dimmer. The lights get brighter and brighter because your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness you know that even though you're coming to a close you know that you're going to a place where every day will be hello howdy howdy and never goodbye you'll be with your friends and your family uh, of a spiritual and a divine nature you'll be in that place called heaven uh, never to leave there ever again uh, it leadeth to destruction the broad way when I need you to know is this word translated destruction uh, in Matthew 7 and 13 uh, is a polyaire which it conveys the idea not of extinction but of ruin uh, not loss of being uh, but loss of well-being uh, I'm here to tell you church uh, let us look at whether or not we would rather be well-being uh, than absolute loss of being uh, the difference between these gates I got to hurry y'all uh, I need to tell you that the difference between these gates uh, the road to heaven uh, is the narrow road uh, in it by means of a narrow gate uh, the Christian life is presented as a round uh, of fun and frolic uh, to be poor or sickly is a a sign of sin or a lack of faith in God Almighty. I've been without before, but it wasn't because my God didn't have everything that I needed. There's some things he didn't give me in an early age because he knew I couldn't handle it in an early age. He waited until I got older. He waited until I became mature. He waited till I put all my trust on him. He waited till I put my weight on him. And then he said, now I can give this to you because you know how to handle what it is that I'm putting in your possession. Sometimes God doesn't give us everything we want in our early stages because we are not ready to handle it. But that does not mean uh, that God doesn't love us. That does not mean that we haven't made the right choice. We made the right choice. But everything, as I stated earlier, that we want is not what God wants to have because he knows we can't handle some things. So the difference in this here, in this Christian life, is people oftentimes look, why are you so holy? Why are you? Why are you different? Because I was called by a different calling. Because I chose a different gate. That's what makes me different. And we need to tell people that they too need to become different. And they can become different. They can become different by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you that the Lord depicts the way of heaven. He said we must begin at the straight gate. And literally, that means the narrow gate. Some people say, man, you Church of Christ folk, y'all are something else. Well, I'm glad you know I'm something else because I really am something else. I'm not a sinner anymore. I was a sinner, but now I'm saved by grace. So I am something else. The world can't enjoy your beauty or your blessings, or your non-conforming attitude, or your way, because you are different. You're different in the sense because your home is not here. Your home is in heaven. Your citizenship is not here. Your citizenship is in heaven, Philippians 3 and 20. And you understand and know that, you know what, I, I, I'm just a pilgrim. And what does a pilgrim do? He just passes 
through. But it's good to know that when I'm passing through, I'm not being passed by because I have made the right decision. And I know where my destination is. I'm talking about the difference between the gates here. I came to tell you that if your conversion, if your conversion didn't cost you anything, if your conversion didn't cost you anything, you need to look into what you believed. If it didn't cost you nothing, you need to check and see, did I really believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died, buried, and rose on a Sunday morning? I need to check myself and see whether or not I'm walking along the straight and the narrow way. Or do I dibble and dabble over here in the broad and in the narrow? I came by to tell you Jesus makes it plain in the Sermon on the Mount. He says no man can serve two masters. You can only serve one. It's either God or the devil. Straight and narrow or broad and wide. In other words, Satan wants you to believe. It's the greatest trick, one of the tricks he wants. He wants everybody to believe like the, uh, the church in Revelation. That, that you know what? I, I'm rich and increased with goods and I have no need of nothing. And so it's hard to get people out of that broad and off that broad way. Because they're looking at materialistic and temporary things but you can't take any of those temporary things with you as a matter of fact to be honest you can't take mama you can't take daddy you can't take kids grandkids along that way you can only take yourself you can tell them which gate or which way is better. But you cannot make them go that way. They have to decide for themselves. And have you ever tried to paint a picture between uh, the right and the wrong of young people or even older people? I'm trying to show you what's right and I'm trying to show you what's wrong with what you're trying to do. But they decide that I don't want what's right. I want what I want. Here's what I love about God. God will let you make your decision. He will let you enter in on that broad gate. He will let you walk that path. He will let you enjoy everything along the way. And then he will turn around and at the end of the road, he will say, well, since you made your choice, I won't need to let you know what your benefit package is. I'm trying to help somebody because so many people need to be saved. We discover that if, if, if it didn't cost us nothing, then we need to check things out because what God calls us to, he calls us to a denying of ourselves according to the book of, of Luke 9 and 23. Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me daily. That's difficult. That's a difficult task. But Jesus demands and commands us to take up our cross and to deny ourselves and to follow him daily. But not only that, we have to have a transformation of the mind and oftentimes we come out of the world but the world is still in us and we know that it's a work in progress but we have to learn and understand that Paul writes in the book of 1 Corinthians 12 and 1. He said, I beseech you, brethren. He's talking to the church. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. How? A living sacrifice. He wants a living sacrifice. That means that your conversion costs you something. You got to sacrifice some stuff for God. It's some saying no to self and saying yes to God. You got to serve God. You got to give God your best. You don't give God your second best. You got to give God everything you got. When 
you think about it, he's given us all that heaven had. He bankrupted heaven to give himself to us that we might learn and understand that the narrow way is the only way. The broad way is there, but that's put there by Satan who's trying to deceive you and get you to think that I can do it any way I want to. You cannot do it any way you want to. You got to do it God's way or don't do it at all because God requires us to sacrifice ourselves. See, we, 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 we can't enter the straight gate and walk the broad pathway at the same time. We have to understand and we must know by the word of God that since we are buried with Christ by baptism into the death that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so must we walk in the newness of life. You're not the same that you used to be. When you enter that straight and narrow gate, you are not the same. Some things must change. This ain't a popular lesson, but it's right. It ain't but two verses. Y'all endure with me. As a matter of fact, James 4 and 4 said, friendship. He says, friendship with the world is enmity with God. How are you going to love a world that crucified your Lord and Savior? I love the Lord. He knows my heart. You better believe and understand what you're saying when you say he knows my heart. You're absolutely right. He knows your heart. And so he says, therefore, the road to heaven is narrow. It's a narrow way. But it broadens out as we continue along that way, as we grow in grace and knowledge. Now, I came by to tell you that you ain't got it all. But the longer you walk with God, the longer you walk with God, the better you begin to understand God and the relationship that y'all have together. You, 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 when you walk with God for a while and you begin to, to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you, you begin to understand that, that nobody loves me like, like God loves me. No, 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 nobody can do me like God can do me. You, you, you learn that God put up with me through all of that stuff, that foolishness, and he still loves me for me doing this. He, he still loves me. He still, can, he still provides. He still puts a roof over my shoulder. He, he still puts movement in my body. He, he still puts food in the refrigerator. He puts gas in my car. And as a matter of fact, he gave me the car. He, he, he gave me a, a little money. In fact, the little money, it was a stimulus check for some of us. Man might have signed off on it, but it was God that gave it. <laughs> we have to understand that, 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 that when we grow in grace and knowledge, we, we grow to a point where we trust God. Not with some things. We trust God in all things. It's when we continue to discover that, that God is a, is a mighty good God. It, it, that's why you hear so many people say, but they really don't understand. God is not good some of the time, but God is good. And all the time, God is good. A lot of people say that, but they don't really understand that. They don't understand what that really means. In order for us to enjoy the benefits and continue in that narrow pathway, we need to understand that you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven without any trials, any tribulations. You're going to go through some stuff. I read in Acts chapter 14 and 22, he said, where it's written, Paul's was confirming the souls of the disciples to continue in the faith. Whatever you do, church, I want you to know, continue in the faith. Paul said that we, through much tribulation, must enter into the kingdom of God. Am I going to have some trials? Yes, I am. Am I going to have some tribulations? Yes, I am. Am I going to have some painful days? Yes, I am. But I'm going somewhere. You don't understand where I'm going. I may not have what you have. I may not look like what you look like, but I know who I believed in, and I am convinced that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him. The road to heaven, if you will, is a path of intellectual challenge, emotional fulfillment, 
fulfillment, tremendous opportunity, and unspeakable joy. Uh, 1 Peter 1 and verse number 8, uh, I have some good news, church. It starts out on the narrow, but if you continue along this narrow pathway and stay in this narrow pathway, uh, it gets better and better as time goes by and we find ourselves confronted with eternity. It gets sweeter and sweeter, the song says, as the days go by, the path just as the shining light that shineth more and more to the perfect day. Proverbs 4 and 18, there is a narrow road that runs from earth to heaven and there is a broad road that runs from earth to hell. Uh, we need to decide which road we'll choose on. I, I want heaven's way because I have caught enough hell down here. I, I don't want to agree in hell and have to live in hell when I didn't caught enough hell down here. Even though I went through hell down here, I had some divine help to see me through those hellish times. I thank God for allowing me to do that because it drew me closer to God. It's amazing how you can have some several kids. You can look at one of them and it'll scare them and they'll line up. You have to yell at another one before they line up, and then the other one you just got to beat. We're like that in the family of God. Sometimes God can just the least little thing, He got our attention. Sometimes God got to get a little louder and take some stuff. Get our attention. Then sometimes God got to slap us upside the head, kick us in the back, take everything from us, and then we're like, Lord, help. It, it doesn't have to be like that. But we thank God that he will try to at least get our attention. Amen, somebody. <clears throat> there's no road that runs from there. I need you to understand that there's only one intersection, one place where these two roads intersect. Somebody said that the broad road intersects the narrow road at just one place. In my observation, in my study, in the word of God, I've discovered that that is very true. These two roads <clears throat> intersect at Calvary. They intersect at the cross. Isn't it funny how sometimes people can come to an intersection and the intersection is where we have to decide on which way we'll choose. But I came by to tell you that I understand something about coming to that intersection. That intersection, as I hurry, is a place where the broad way and the narrow way comes to a head. And we have to decide whether or not we're going to choose the broad way or the narrow way. And... It's at the cross, church. It's at the cross where we come together at these two intersections, but only sometimes some of us are able to see the light. And we see the light at the cross, and others do not recognize the light there at the cross. So they take the broad and the narrow way because it looks like it's the right way. It seems like it's the right way. But I came by to tell you, there is no other way that we can get from earth to heaven other than by the Son of God, Jesus Christ. There are ways that Satan has put out here to make people think that all I got to do is just say, I accept the Lord Jesus in my heart. There's others to say that, that, that I don't know. I don't know any other thing that I need to do is just say, you know what? I, I, I believe that there is a God. Well, I came by to tell you, there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. According to Proverbs 14 around verse number 12, I let you know that the Lord Jesus himself said, I don't want you confused about the matter when you're trying to find your way to heaven and you're trying to find the narrow way that God is leading you in Jesus says in John 14 and 6 that I am the way uh, there's no other way other than Jesus Christ that man can be saved yes his rules and his principles are sometimes difficult to stand up to sometimes his principles are hard to live by but when you find out that his way is the only way his way is the right way you follow in the way of God even if everybody around you turns and goes back you keep on moving in the direction of God because one of these old days when God closes our eyes in death uh, and we fold our arms uh, and our head is pressed against the pillow, our spirit leaves uh, and it returns back to God. And then we find out that our eternal destination uh, is a place where we don't desire to be. We'll wake up like the rich man. Wake up like the rich man where he was when he found out uh, that he was in hell and he had the poor man, uh, Lazarus, the poor man rather, in the arms of Abraham. We'll discover that hell is a real place for real people. Heaven 
heaven is a real place for real people. And Jesus leaves the decision up to us to decide where we will spend our eternity. And therefore, it's imperative for us as a church to tell everybody all about somebody named Jesus Christ who is able to save their souls, who died for them, who wants them to be with him in glory and get off the devil's pathway and get on the Lord's pathway and go on to heaven and find your eternal rest there and stop fooling around with this foolishness procrastinating about Jesus Christ. God is not playing. Jesus did not die because he didn't love us. He died because he loves us. Jesus doesn't put up with us because he doesn't love us and he's afraid of somebody. He puts up with us because he loves us. He wants the best for all of his creatures. And the best that he could give was himself. Who was it that said in the song, giving you the best of me? Amazing. Who was it? Y'all act like y'all scared to speak up now. Who was it? I need a big. No, 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 no. There you go. There you go. There you go. Need a big of my age. I used to see her when she was a little girl singing over in Detroit. But there's another one here. Anthony Hamilton said, I'm giving you the best of me. It's amazing. But y'all know what he was talking about? He was giving somebody else the best of him. But I'm talking to us that we will give God the best of us because he's given unto me the best of him. And church, I ain't got no better sense than to tell you that every morning I get up, I open my eyes, I say it's amazing how God has blessed me to still be here. And to recognize that it was not because I was so smart. It was not because I have a college degree. It was not because I'm a preacher. Not because I've been married 41 years. Not because I have a grown son and a grandson. Not because I'm able to pick out some little cheap suits. But it's because of his amazing love and his grace that is absolutely amazing. He gives us a choice. And the greatest choice that we could ever make is to choose Jesus. I put everything I got on Jesus. I've seen some dark, challenging days. And I didn't know how I was going to get through. I've laid under the knife of the surgeons and I've been put to sleep. Didn't even know I was in the world. I woke up and I said, Lord, thank you. I'm still here but before they put me to sleep you know what I knew that if I didn't wake up I know where I'm going I was not going to miss my street I came by to tell you today don't miss your street don't miss your street there's only one gate and we need to enter in at the narrow gate I don't care if you're young. I don't care if you're old. You need to enter in at the narrow gate. Turn the TV on this morning. Somebody kill. Somebody else kill. Went from one thing to, from, to being a homicide. You ever notice two things about life? You read on a death certificate. And the death certificate says this. It says one or two things that you'll ever find on a death certificate. <laughs> you think about this. It says suicide or homicide. Or then you'll see sometimes where natural causes. But the most thing you see is suicide or homicide. What does homicide mean? Homicide means that Someone else took you out. Thief coming, but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Satan wants 
to take you out. That's what he wants to do. Suicide, on the other hand, means when you do it to yourself. We have too many people that are dying either by homicide, they're mad at somebody, they're frustrated, or they're, 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 there's something that has transpired in their life and they say, you know what, that took me out. They took me out. Satan took me out. But suicide is when you know the truth. When you've heard the truth. And you know that the truth is the truth because you look well into your going. And you refuse to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's suicide. That's spiritual suicide. And the Lord wants everybody who's anybody to be saved and he wants us as a church to go into the whole world and teach and preach this gospel to every creature that he that believeth and is baptized not might be but shall be saved what are you doing today how will your spiritual death certificate read will it read homicide will it read Suicide. Because a natural cause, all of us are going to leave here. Because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews 9 and 27, it is appointed unto man wants to die. But after death, the judgment, that's natural cause. Suicide, homicide. Which one will it be? I ain't going to kill myself. I love me some brook. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm not talking about this physical. I love me some brook. I don't like pain. I don't like torture. When I go to get my teeth cleaned, I say, listen, is it going to hurt? Because if it is, you might as well give me something for pain. And they laugh just like y'all do. And I say, listen, I, I mean, I've had enough pain in life and I know I'm going to have some more but if I don't have to have it maybe I don't want it we can go through some pain knowing the pain killer which is Jesus <laughs> or we can go through pain and not know the pain killer I'd rather know Jesus in my sickness, in my sadness, in all my trials and tribulation, than to know the devil with abundant riches of things that are only temporal down here. I came by to tell you God loves you. He loves you so much he spared you and I to be here today. He spared us. He spared us. It wasn't exercise. It was none of that. It was grace. And mercy. If you're here this morning, you're not a child of God. My prayer to God is that you'll make the right choice. The choice to say, you know what, Lord, I, I, I'm going to enter in at the straight gate. And maybe perhaps you've been on the straight, entered into the straight gate, but somewhere along the way you got lost. You got, you got frustrated. You got distracted. And you, 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 you wandered off somewhere. God is affording you an opportunity today to return back and get it right. I don't say this to scare anyone. I say this because it's true. Our time is running out. And where we spend eternity will be the decision that only you and I can make. If you're here, you say, what do I need to do to be saved? Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to hear this gospel. The gospel is the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is that Jesus Christ, he died on a Friday out on Calvary's cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. But on Sunday morning, he got up with all power. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He died so that you and I might live. He became poor that you and I might become rich spiritually. 
He died that you and I might not have to be trying to find our own way, but he died that he may inform us that he is the way back to heaven. He died because he loves you. And because he died, and we hear that gospel, we have to understand that faith must be in his son, Jesus Christ. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You must believe that with all of your heart. This is what I, I believe part of it. But I'm, he, he, God doesn't want half. I told you that. It's all or nothing. He that come to God according to Hebrews 11 6 must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. What are we seeking after today? What are we seeking after? I need more money. Well, everybody need more money. But ain't it amazing how when you die you don't get to enjoy any of that money. Somebody else enjoy everything that you were trying to get and gain. Or you get sick. You get put off in a nursing home and then they take everything. We give you $38 a month. Start looking at what's important and what's not important. You got to believe that diligently seek after him. Then you got to repent. You got to turn from your way of thinking to the way of God's thinking. That the narrow gate is the only gate that I need to be in. And the narrow way is the way that I need to continue in. You got to repent. Luke 13, 3 and 5 says, I tell you nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. God's word is true. It will not fail. Did y'all hear what I said? His word is true. His word will stand forever. Then we must be com courageous enough to confess that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. I've been introduced by some great people on some great occasions. But I cannot wait again to be introduced again to the father Amen. by the son. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 10, 32 and 33, he said, he that confesses me before Men, him also will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. But he that denies me before men, him also will I deny before my Father which is in heaven. You confess Christ, Christ will confess you. He belongs to the family. This is one of the family members. One of the family members. One of the family members. Wretched old me being a family member with a holy and an almighty God. And his son, Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine that? And then we must be willing to be buried. That means to be baptized, not sprinkled, but submerged, buried down in the watery grave of baptism. For what? To wash away your sins. Anything that's dirty, you know what we need to do with it? We wash it. God finds us stained with sin. But he says, I'm going to make you spotless because I'm going to wash you in a detergent that the world cannot afford. They can't, they can't duplicate. There's nothing they can do to reproduce this right here. He washes us in the blood of Jesus Christ. And when we're washed in that blood of Jesus Christ, all sins are forgiven. Every little sin that you've done, every big sin that you've done, everything you've thought is forgiven right then and there. Because when you rise up, you rise up with a new walk. You, you ain't got to worry about this physical walk like I told you like this. You can walk in the light here as he is in the light. And guess what happens? You have fellowship one with another. There's nothing like the fellowship of God. And if you're here and you're falling short. Ask God. God, I've sinned. I've fallen short. Everybody, everybody. I don't know a man or a woman who hadn't fallen. It's not whether or not you fall. It's whether or not you're willing to get up. The Lord is here to lift us up. If we fall and ask God to forgive us. If we confess our faults, he's faithful and just to forgive us. And there again, and his blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But remember, I don't like them kind of sermons. You ain't got to like it. It's in the book. Anyhow, I'm going to preach the book. It ain't whether I like I got hit with it first. And we have to teach it and tell it and preach it 
until God calls all of us home. If you're here, you need prayer. And all of us need prayer. I'm the first one. Y'all pray for me. Pray for my family. Pray, pray for me. Pray for the whole church. I'm the first one to ask for prayer. Some folk don't want to ask for prayer. It seems like I'm always in need. We are always in need. The devil is always after you. You are always in need. You are in need of God's continued grace and mercy and strength to keep you going. You need that because you know how easy it is to get caught up? You can get caught up easily. And we have not because we ask not. Whatever your need is, whatever your desire is, you want to be saved? We'll baptize you today. The water is ready. The question is, are you ready? You'll rise up to walk in the newness of life. The Lord adds you to the church, Acts 247. If you're here and you're falling short and you want to get it right, what better day to get it right than today? You know, the man said, I'm going to tear down my barns and build bigger barns because I need more storage space for my stuff. And the Lord said, you fool. Here he is making plans about what he's going to do. The Lord called him a fool. When the Lord called you a fool, you're a fool. He said, you fool. Thou soul will be required of you this night. We never know. We're on borrowed time. Get it right. Get it right. If you're here and you stand in any of these three places, I want to be baptized. I want to confess sins. Or I want to ask for prayer. I'm asking you by the authority of God that you would stand where you are and make your request known unto God. God is able. He's more than able to do abundantly above all that we can think, ask, or imagine. Ask God to help you. He's ready. The question is, are you ready to receive the abundant blessings of God for he wants us to have them? Bring us to the next portion of service, that is of the offering. Example is found in 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 7. And it reads, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having that that you need, you will abound in every good work. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, dear Lord, thank you for allowing us this time and space to give back a portion of what you have allowed us to earn to take care of our families. May this offering be handled in a, a manner according to your will and your way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. We've come to the portion of the worship hour where we are required uh, to take of communion, to partake of communion. We receive those instructions from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 through 29, and those instructions read as follows. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do ye in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament. In my blood this do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we, we come to you this morning and we give thanks for your, for your love and for your grace and for your mercy. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to, uh, to come back. Uh, to the building, to fellowship, and to worship uh, one with another. Father, we thank you for your sacrifice, Father. Uh, we just ask at this time that we examine ourselves uh, in such a way that we find ourselves uh, worthy uh, to partake in this sacrament. Father, we ask these things and all things as humbly as we know how in your 
Son, Jesus' name, amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we once again thank you for allowing us to be here this morning, Father, to get another portion of your word. We ask you, Father, that you just allow us to take that word out into the to the world, Father, to anything we say to them that, that pertains to you, Father, that it touch their heart and allow them to want to be saved, Father. I ask you, Father, that you just continue just to be with this world with all the negativity going on, the killing and shooting and everything. Be with the government, the president, just anybody that's in charge, Father, of just getting things together, Father. We just thank you so much for being who you are. We just ask you, Father, that you be with us as we leave this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. And how the ransom singers will together lift that hymn, oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. We're singing, oh, what joy when we get home yes we're gonna rest beneath that cloudless dawn and in that land where saints never die oh we're gonna sing hallelujah sing hallelujah by and by